Um, so we've seen, you know, how some of these uh, efforts are bringing food and food access into the schools. Um, and kind of going back into the schools, we're going to talk about how to remove some items, I guess, and reconfigure your, the school program. Um, Meg Domas, you know, there's, there's some superstar uh, nutrition directors out there, and, and Meg, in my mind, is one of them. Um, she's the executive director of school nutrition at Northeast ISD in San Antonio. Um, she's just, again, member of American Dietetic Association, the School Nutrition Association, the Texas Association of School Nutrition. She sits on the advisory boards for the San Antonio Mayor's Fitness Council, which is the privilege that I've had of, of getting to know her work through that. Um, HEB Health and Wellness State Advisory Board and the National Children's Health Study. Um, it's, it's quite an honor to have you here, Meg. Welcome, Meg. Well, thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon. Um, just to start off, I will give you just some real basic information about our school district. We are located in San Antonio, and um, we have about 43 to 44% eligibility free and reduced, and that kind of is a range. We have some schools that are at 92%, some that are at 10%. So it's kind of a broad spectrum of demographics in our school district. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is a program that we did about two years ago in which we decided to eliminate the a la carte lines in our middle schools. So we have a la carte lines in our middle and high schools, and um, as many school districts do. And um, I think one of the things that we did isn't really unique to, um, to Northeast, but it is something that we tried and, um, and how it worked out for us. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why we moved to this was um, some basic observations. And um, in kind of going out to visiting schools during lunchtime, one of the things that was observed was that the schools that were a high percentage free and reduced, that had a la carte lines, that during lunch those lines would be very short and um, the lines with the uh, reimbursable meal lines, those lines would be very long. And so there was a high frustration level with school principals because we all know School principals, one of the worst things that they hate to see is a long line at lunchtime. They don't like that. Um, so they wanted to um, get the line moving. Um, the next thing was just kind of looking at what some of the purchases were that students were making in the all of the cart line. Um, typically, we did a lot of hot sandwiches, that type of thing. So a lot of the major purchases were hot sandwiches, but then they would always get a sport drink that we might have with it, a bag of baked chips, one of those things. So, so the, the combination was not um, very diverse in the food groups, I guess we should say. Now granted, the food items that were offered in the a la carte lines all met the standards of the nutrition policy, so we were in, in compliance in those areas, but I think where we were not in compliance with was giving them the opportunity to, to make better choices. Um, we did a lot of focus in our reimbursable lines on making sure we had a lot of whole grains, making sure that we had a very wide variety of fruits and vegetables and fat-free milk, all of those things. We had a lot of emphasis there. For some reason, and I'm not sure how we got there, but um, our a la carte lines would offer fruit. We offered our fresh fruit. We offered low-fat milks, but it was not displayed at the same level. It was not the variety. So it really looked like our emphasis was make a good choice over here, do whatever you want to over here, was basically what it looked like. And I was, I was in charge of that. So I wasn't very happy with what we were doing. And we really wanted the kids to be able to make a better food choice when they went through the line. So we just decided we were, uh, we were going to um, change that up a little bit. So um, we formed some goals to do that in the process. And one of them was to increase the number of reimbursable meals that we had. One of the things in doing this that we came to realize is that we had created an informal stigma. Now, all of us know in school nutrition, one of our biggest requirements is not to identify a student by their eligibility. But somehow it became an, an Teachers would tell me this, PTA would tell me this, the principals would tell me this, 
The reimbursable line, that's the line for the children that are on the meal program. The a la carte line is for the line that the other kids, the full paying students go to. We're not sure how they knew that because we were in compliance on um, identifying students as they went through the line, but it just became a very informal identification and we, that was one of the things we wanted to get rid of. And then to speed up the line service, as I said. So before going into it, uh, one of the biggest concerns that I had was the percentage of students that we had on free and reduced meals. Now when I had talked to other school districts that didn't have a la carte lines, generally their percentage of free and reduced was a lot higher. And we were more at the mid-level range, so I wasn't sure what that was going to do to us with respect to um, our funding because of our, our revenue because of the number of free and reduced that we had. Um, the acceptability by the students. Um, our middle school students were very accustomed to this level of service. Um, for many middle school students, the best thing about being in the sixth grade was that you could now go through the a la carte line. So it was, it was a rite of passage to go to middle school. Uh, frequently when they would have open house in the middle schools, the sixth graders, they were taught how to go through that line. So it was a, it was a big deal. And I was going to take it away from them. So. The acceptability by the parents, um, prior to doing this, a couple years prior to doing that, we just did a survey in our district and one of the questions that we asked on the survey was, what is one of the reasons why you choose to eat lunch in the cafeteria? And one of the biggest reasons why parents would have their children eat lunch in the cafeteria was because it was convenient. And so we felt like that was a big plus in our favor is that because we offered a convenience to them, um, but then, and also looking at what the students were purchasing and the amount of money that many of them were spending, we also realized we could really appeal to the, stu to the parents because we felt like we would be able to save them money. The middle school students would go from paying five and six dollars for their lunch to two dollars for their lunch if they, bought, if they were a full paying student. So we felt like that would be a very good argument in our favor with the parents. Um, financial impact. Um, as I said, a la carte revenue for us was, it was big. We made a lot of money in our a la carte lines because they were very, very popular. We could st structure the prices to uh, meet the food costs of what those items were. And so it was a very big revenue generator. And then school concerns. Um, in talking with the principals on what we needed to do to communicate this change, once again, the biggest thing that the principals were ever going to be concerned about was what was going to happen with the line. How long was it going to take the kids? So we really wanted to make sure that the students fully understood what the, new, what the program was going to be. We wanted to make sure that um, the teachers and the administrators fully understood what it could be. So when we communicated, it wasn't just us communicating with the children, it was the teachers communicating with it, the administrator and the parents communicating um, what the program was. We didn't want to communicate to the kids that we had taken something away from them. We wanted to communicate that we had um, given them basically a better opportunity, a better value for their meals, and so th that was what our big change was going to be. Um, in many of the sites, well, one of the things that we did do um, was to kind of reformat a little bit what our lines look like so that it was an overall change as opposed to just a food item change. We were changing the menu. We changed uh, kind of what the, with some graphics and painting, that type of thing, what the cafeteria lines look like. So we moved into our changes and from what we basically did was make all of our meals on all of our lines all reimbursable. So. Um, we offered a lot of different a la carte items. I mean, we, we had a lot of inventory when it came to a la carte. So we had sport drinks. We had um, a variety of baked chips. We had different types of hot items and burritos and egg rolls and box pizzas and chicken nuggets and a whole bunch of stuff, lots of stuff. You could get whatever you wanted to. Um, so basically what we did was we took out anything that could never contribute to the reimbursable meal, we weren't going to offer it anymore. So our a la carte, and we created two different line types. We created a line that we called Savor the Flavor, and that was more of our traditional 
hot lunch, um, spaghetti, or a chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes and green beans, that type of thing. And then the grill line was the old a la carte line. So um, our reimbursable lines had always had hot sandwiches, that type of thing, you know, chicken, chicken, grilled chicken sandwich, hamburgers, that type of thing. We moved those items off of our reimbursable lines and put them into our grill line. So now a student, when they went through the line, their choices on that were a variety of different hot sandwiches. They might have five or six different choices. They might have a grilled chicken sandwich, um, a hamburger, a, a hot dog. There might be a cold sandwich variety for them. But instead of the sides that went with that sandwich being chips or pretzels or something like that, the sides that that student could pick up now went to being baked beans, corn, salads, fresh fruit, those type of things. So basically, we pushed the envelope a little bit by saying, we already knew that the sandwich had two of the meal components for a reimbursable meal. It had the meat and the bread. So we already knew all, they had, all the child had to do was just pick up one other thing. That's all they had to do. And by taking away the things that didn't contribute to the reimbursable meal and making sure the only options that the kids could take, it narrowed down any kind of discussion at the end of the line with the student on, you need to take one more thing. So we just made sure that we had things there that they liked, that there was a lot of variety for them, and we just had to coax them a little bit along the way, like, don't forget, you can take this with your lunch. Don't forget, this all is free with your lunch. We, used, we had to educate our staff on how to talk to the students about what, what, the, what came with their meals. So the big question a lot of times that I get is, do we still sell a la carte? And yes and no. No, we don't sell a la carte from the standpoint of we don't have a la carte lines. We don't just sell an a la carte lunch where a kid just goes through and just kind of takes whatever they want to. We focus it all into a reimbursable meal. But yes, we do sell a lot of things a la carte. If a kid just wants to buy a carton of milk, that's a la carte. If they just want to buy juice, that's a la carte. But um, we don't have, and we have some little, little desserty things. There might be a little granola bar. There might be a pudding cup that they might want to get. Those things like that. There's small little things that might accent a lunch. Uh, we never wanted to say that it's not good, you know, ice cream is bad. We don't want to say that. But a small portion of ice cream, if you've had your lunch, is, is a nice little dessert, and the calories are good for a lot of the growing kids. So there are some little things there, but the point is, before the child can really, um, those are just kind of supplements to the lunch. What we don't do is really let students take just a sandwich without anything else. Now, we're, we still work offer versus serve by, um, like I said, kind of coaxing them into making sure they get the reimbursable meal. But if the kid is just bent on, they're not going to take anything else, then we stop there. So there are some exceptions to it, but um, I think I'll show you that the meals that are being served are all reimbursable meals, or the majority of them. So the results after, um, we did a very small pilot before we went with all of our school districts in about two schools. And um, so after um, um, a period of time, we kind of began to look at um, our results. And we showed what we thought we would see, that our meal participation increased because we decreased a la carte. So it just picked itself up on the other side. Um, but some of the things we weren't really sure what we were going to see were things like um, our profit increased even with our decrease in a la carte sales. So we still maintained revenue, if nothing, and we increased our revenues. And then we had an increased number of free and reduced lunches at both our high and our low percentage schools. And this is one of the areas that I found pretty interesting because my assumption was, was that schools that had already a high free and reduced that we were probably capturing most of those students anyway. When in reality, I found out that we had a lot of students that were eligible for free or reduced meals that weren't participating because they didn't want to be associated with the line that they were going through. And so we, once again, it was all of a sudden we had a stigma that we didn't know we had, and we took it away. Um, and I think, if anything, that's one of the more rewarding aspects of, of what happened with this. Um, 
Some other things that it did was um, it helped us really reduce our inventory levels of food items that we had in the schools. So it helped us control some of our food costs. Because we had um, such a variety of a la carte items, you know, you order those in by the case and it takes a lot of space in your pantry and in your storage area. And so by kind of narrowing down the food selections, we also narrow down um, just our inventory management on what the cafeteria managers were having to look at. So I'm just going to briefly show you some graphs on what some of the changes were between 2010, the year 2010, and the year 2011. So 2009-10 was the year we had a la carte lines. 2010-11 was the year that our middle schools um, switched all the lines to reimbursable. And as you can see, um, all of the eligibility levels went up. Um, a big increase in paid, which again is something that we anticipated happening because those a la carte sales that those students were buying now became reimbursable meals. So money, the big, the big one. Um, this graph shows you what our changes were in our a la carte, in our, how our a la carte sales went down, which we anticipated that they would go down. Our a la carte sales and revenue went down. But our student meals and our federal re reimbursement, the revenue that we got from those went up, and it went up more than what the a la carte sales went down, which is what we wanted to happen. <laughs> um, and here's just another comparison kind of of the revenue in the middle schools from one year to the next, from 2010 to 2011. So once again, showing that the overall revenue went up. And then just as kind of an example, we did have some um, increases in, in our costs, but we kind of anticipated that because we were serving a lot more meals. But overall, uh, the bottom line was that um, from one year to the next, we had an increase in our reimbursable lunches by quite a bit. And as a result of that, we also had an increase in profit from one year to the next. So the biggest concern that I had um, was that I would do this, it would not work, and, um, and I would be in trouble. But, um, <laughs> but I'm okay. <laughs> I didn't have to pack the box or anything like that. But um, it, frankly, it surprised me that it, was, that it went as well as, as it did. Um, we really didn't get very many comments from anybody. That's what was even the, the very strange thing. When we started implementing it um, at the middle schools and some of the initial tests that we ran, we were dealing with middle school students. So we got our fair share of eye rolling, like, I have to take what? You're going to tell me what? That type of thing. And some of them rolled their eyes, picked up their fruit, deposited their fruit at the end of the counter, and were just kind of we're going to be resistant about the whole thing. But after about a week, then um, they stopped doing that, and then they started consuming the food. So, you know, they, they, they did what they were supposed to do as middle school students, and we, we let them do it, and they're fine. Um, <laughs> that was the best part. Um, the comments that we got from the parents were, again, very surprising. Um, they were a little confused, some of them, and they just wanted an explanation on what it was. I think some of them, when they found out that what we were trying to do was encourage kids to take more fresh fruits and, more fresh fruits and vegetables and to accept the reimbursable lunch, um, they accepted it more because, you know, a little bit of what um, the kids were telling them wasn't quite what was really happening because they were middle school students. <laughs> so once we said... Um, this is what we're doing. You no, know, your child doesn't. Your child gets all of this for two dollars. They get this. Then they were much more accepting about what was going on. And then when they realized that they were saving three or four dollars a day in in lunches for their kids, then um, they were even more accepting about it. Um, the administration liked it because um, their lines were moving. It evenly dispersed the kids out. Um, some cafeterias didn't have to add on a lunch period. They could stay within 
they could stay within their lunch periods that they had scheduled rather than increasing lunch periods because all the kids were getting the line through the line at the same time. So, um, you know, basically that's it. It, it, worked, it worked very well for us. Um, I think we were very fortunate that we had really strong administration support and support from our school principals because they were the ones that really had to communicate what was really happening to the students because what we didn't want to do was have discussion with students at the end of the line on what, what the changes were. So they were very beneficial in helping us um, kind of make the change. And with that, I'll stop. Um, thank you, Meg. Uh, to me, what, what ca came out of all of that is not only the fact that, you know, school nutrition is dealing with nutrition and feeding the children and so on and so forth, but you're running a business. And, wow, I mean, you're like a CEO for turning the profits, you know, upside down and, and reconfiguring everything um, and doing something very bold where you could have gotten in a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. 